you can be the next world champion if you want to. If you can imagine it, you can get it. Yo, Gorillas, welcome to the Athlete Insider Podcast by Gorilla Nation. My name is Phil, and today's guest is a professional calisthenics athlete. Uh, dynamics and statics inspiration and the Israeli national champion of 2018. I'm happy to welcome Tom Rosenberg. Welcome, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. I'm really I'm happy. happy. I'm also really happy to make this happen. Uh, a lot of people asked about you. And uh, yeah, it's great that you took the time. And we will get into it directly. Who is Tom Rosenberg? How do you present yourself? So... I'm Tom Rosenberg. You guys know I'm from Israel already. Um, I've been doing calisthenics for seven and a half years already. Since the age of 14, about 14, I found out the sport. Um, it started as just a passion for me. I've never thought that I'm going to compete in it, to be honest. But as I got better and better and I learned about the sport and the competitions, I found passion for competitions also. And... Um, I, the whole gen, journey is really, really big, but shortly it started as a passion. We did basics like pull-ups, dips, push-ups for one and a half years. I didn't do a back lever. Like I had 20, like not clean, but 20 muscle-ups. Very not clean, I was 16. But I didn't do a back lever before I could do like more than 10 muscle-ups, which is pretty crazy because nowadays everybody wants the elements. Dan and I together just wanted like to get stronger in basics. And the basics actually gave me the huge boost in performance that I had the following years. So we started as basics and then we did elements, only statics for a few years. And then dynamics, dynamics got more known. The whole world started doing dynamics and it got to Israel. Dan was like the first one to do a 540 in Israel, which is crazy because now it's the basic, one of the basics. But we were so hyped about 540 shrimp flip. So this is like shortly what we had. It was like basics, which I recommend when I train people, start with basics always, then statics and then dynamics. That's like... Already in these two minutes of beginning, uh, you, you said so much important and interesting stuff. Um, yeah. Because I, I remember your uh, doing calisthenics at school, like uh, like your videos or your like. It was really funny that you that you like you were 15, 16 and like <laughs> doing crazy 15, stuff, 15. crazy stuff on the on the schoolyard and uh, like. That was so so nice to see and um, yeah, but you you started it only with with us um, with um, reps with um, yeah, yeah like sets and reps, and then when I got better and better, when I saw that I I'm better like than most of the people in my country, I wanted to compete. So there was the first competition in Israel. I was injured in my biceps, so Dan was competing. I didn't, but the year after I competed, Dan took the first place. I took the second. The year after. Um, it was the same, 2017, I think. And then I took the first place and then was the third, actually. Wow. Yeah. So that's like shortly what happened. Great. Before we dive in more in detail, um, people are always interested in the hard facts. So how old are you right now? Okay, so I'm 22. I just turned 22. It's like two weeks ago. Yes. So <laughs> I remember I'm all 22. the people doing stories and like yeah yeah you're, it was you're so nice born yeah. my heart so many people it was when, very nice so when, it's your, when it's your birthday everybody knows like everybody <laughs> does stories like <laughs> it's so nice really i was so glad to see many people care and they don't even know me that well so nice so yeah i'm 22 um weight and hate i guess people want to know yeah so currently i don't wait much i don't wait much i will explain later why but currently when i was at my peak i was 70 68 to 70 which is a lot because i my height is um one meter and 68 centimeters 168 is pretty short to like waiting 70 mm -hmm. so this was my my peak performance, height and weight. Now I weight like 63, maybe. Wow. Um, I'm not sure because I, I can check, but it doesn't matter that much. So 62, 63, 
in my head is the same. Wow. Yeah, because like 68 is a lot. You like you, you I know that you are you guys are like really really bulky and like you have a good physique for building muscle, I think. Yes. Yes. 100%. Um, but but you feel too heavy with the 68, I guess, like all the planches and stuff like that. So or... When I when I was 70, I felt too heavy, especially not when doing statics, but when doing dynamics, I felt oh, heavy. Okay. When doing the front kick rear grab with what with with it, it's like the best move I I can do right now, 10 out of 10. So when I was 70 kilos, it was much harder. It was, I felt the difference. But when I was 68 kilos, it was mainly fat that went down. So I was shredded and really, really like bulked. So every move was easy for me, dynamics and statics. It doesn't matter that much, but it matters not that much for me. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, I would be interested in how you get got in touch with Calisthenics. Like um, I saw, we saw, I think a lot of people saw the videos where you already did it at school. How did you yeah. get in touch with the sport? Is it just a normal that people do pull-ups and push-ups in Israel or did you know actually so at first when Dan and I found out about calisthenics it wasn't as big as the community communities now in Israel now calisthenics is getting bigger and bigger like everybody knows it but when we started no one knew it actually I didn't know the sport but a friend of mine that was in the same school I was 14 and a half I think he just showed me a YouTube video to Dan and I, and it was so cool. I saw someone like a Russian guy doing planche, but like, like bent arms and very not clean. Mm -hmm. It was, it was really not clean, but I was so fascinated by it that I started looking in and learning about the sport more. And then what the, the way I started the sport is doing pull-ups on the soccer, like mm. gate. On the goal, yeah. 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 So, we did pull-ups on it like half a year and then we finished the school year and we went to high school. And when you we went, the, all the videos are from high school, the videos you saw. And when we went to high school, the break between like the two months summer break, then we started training really hard. Like every, it was almost every day, but it was so intense. So we had to take one day of rest every two or three workouts. It was really intense. And at high school, I just, we just started doing everywhere. Planches, we tried. Planches, um, pull-ups, muscle-ups. At first it was only muscle-ups and pull-ups and dips. But then it got to planches on tables, um, you know, human flag on, on doors, everything we, we could think of. And that's how, actually it was a YouTube video. That's how I started. Wow. And uh, like at the beginning, was it easy for you? Did it uh, go naturally to learn the first pull-ups or muscle-ups? I started with four uh, pull-ups. I could do four pull-ups, okay. which is pretty good. Yeah. Because I wasn't training it. I was an athlete uh, in school. I was doing, um, you know, athletic like runs, long runs and short, like short distance runs. I was competing from school. I, I was athletic always. I've been like doing um, sports, but it was only a hobby. And then when I found a street walker, which started training for it, the progress was pretty fast. Yeah. I think it's genetics and the mentality was the key that that's, I know for sure. Nowadays, the mentality Dan and I built, um, throughout the years is the key to what I am now. And the fast progress I had it was, it looked fast because I did like one and a half years of basics before. That's why I got the planche, straddle planche in two, two months, which is very fast. From zero, tuck planche to straddle in two months is very fast. And yeah, so we started from YouTube video. And if you have any questions, I'd be glad to go in. Did you have a, a concrete, like a specific goal um, that you worked for? Was it the planche from the beginning on? Um, for, so, as I said, for the first uh, year and a half, I had no like static moves um, goals. I had only muscle, muscle ups, different kind of muscle ups, and like archer pull ups and stuff like this. Nothing special. I wanted to gain body, like to gain mass, muscle mass, but nothing really special. After 
I found out statics, then I had goals. Yeah, the planche was my main goal. Um, the front lever was a goal, but it, it wasn't like, um, I, I didn't want it as much as I wanted the planche. After I got the planche, and at the same time, I was training on handstand. So handstand and planche was my main goals. When I had both of them, I started working on press-ups, like straight arm press mostly, mm -hmm. from planche, from like standing, and then it got to like, I was fascinated by, by planche. Planche was my main, is still my favorite element. After I got the straddle, I started working for full planche and then it got really crazy because I started doing variations, working endurance, stuff like this. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we will get to this later because uh, later I will ask, ask you about the, um, the advice that you can give to young street workout athletes. And I yes. think, you can already take a lot of stuff from here, uh, like concerning starting with basics, really basics along like, um, yeah, but we will come to this later. It's a okay. big, big uh, thing. And um, yes. yeah, I really appreciate that you share your experience because it's like, it's priceless. Um, and yeah, yes. um, how let's switch to today. How does your day look like today? Um, yeah, like, so, yeah, nowadays I, mostly train people. I train also myself, but since the Quran started and everything, we got quarantined the, for the first time. We had two quarantines in Israel already, but the first one um, I did train. I'm training like one or twice a week now. It don't, it's not that much for what I was. I was training like four times a week, intensive workouts, sometimes five. Um, so nowadays I train one or twice a week. I'm doing statics mainly. Dynamics, most of the gyms aren't open. So I was going to the beach, but not much. And I train a lot. Like, this is something I wanted to say because you need to know this before we continue with the interview. Um, in my personal life, what's going on now is that street workout is a main, main part. Like, calisthenics is a main part of my life, but mostly training people because I feel like competitions, I'm I'm pretty, I'm not done with competitions. I might be doing it later on, but now I feel like I just want to share my knowledge and I want to see people develop like I did. I want to see this. For me, this is, is calisthenics is not like this anymore. It's like this because I've got to a really high level and every achievement I get is not that huge. Like I have planche, I have front lever, I have handstand, one arm handstand, front lever, front lever, front lever, every combo. Of course, I have much more to learn, but I feel like I want to, to help other people feel and develop mentally and physically the way I did. I want to share the knowledge. I want to, so I'm, I'm doing mostly personal trainings more and more, but I do train one or twice a week. Um, if you have any other questions I would like to answer. Yes, like- about um... my daily life. Yeah, let's like what you you stand up like uh, at what time do you approximately do you st uh, like you stand up? Oh, so like my like okay, so I wake up. You mean like my daily okay my routine my daily routine? <laughs> yes, yeah, like I your... wake up at about yeah I wake up at about um nine. I like to wake up not very early because I'm not an early bird. I'm not the guy that wakes up at five or six. But I'm, I don't like waking up at 11 or 12 because I feel like very sleepy and sluggish the whole day. So I wake up at about nine. Um, what I'm doing is intermittent fasting, if you know what it is. So I'm fasting for 16 hours a day and then eight hours I eat. So I mostly finish eating at about um, nine to 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. evening. And then the day after one or two p.m. I start eating again. So I have a few hours after I wake up where I don't eat anything. I just drink water and I really find it really good for me. It changed my, like I'm more focused the whole day. I'm doing it for two months already. Very, very, very helpful. I'm also very shredded. Like I can't get fit with this diet. It's crazy. <laughs> my. Um, yeah. So I wake up at nine. I don't eat until one, about one. Um, I meditate every morning. I don't know if you guys um, know what meditation is, but you should look it out. It's one of the best tools for 
mental development, which for me is the first priority now. I'm working on my mentality. I'm working out my physical body, but the mentality is much more important because I want to give others the, the mentality that I have um, and I have like developed. So I meditate and then sometimes I do stretches. It's really good to stretch in the morning. And then I just go on about, I help clients. Um, I read a lot in the, on the internet. Um, sometimes I, I game, I like gaming. Some people might know, but I'm really into gaming. It's a hobby of mine, but I wanted to go professionally because I really love it. But I can't, unfortunately, because um, Israel is not a good physical place for gaming because of internet connection, stuff like this. So I'm gaming. And then when I start eating, I, the first thing I do is I drink, you know what, spirulina? Spirulina. Uh, yeah. uh, it's like... It's a superfood. Oh, no, okay. Yes. It's a superfood. Um, it's, I'm not sure like what type of superfood because there are different types, but it's a really, really, really healthy uh, plant, which helps like, you should, you should read about it, spirulina. It helps um, detox the body. It like cleans your body. And it's really good way to, for me to start the day. I love it. I really love it. For the people, yeah, it's a, it's an alk. I, I looked it up, like uh, yes. from the from the sea. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so there were a bit of lugs. Okay, now it's good. So, um, I drink this Purina shake every morning. This is the first thing I put in my body, and then I I wait like one hour before I eat because I want it, my body to digest it, and then I eat my normal meal. I'm vegan for four months already fully vegan um, if one of the viewers, if you're a vegan, just make sure if you're an athlete and vegan, a good tip of mine as a professional athlete that went vegan, make sure that you get all the nutrition you need to get because when you don't eat meat, you need like one of the main things you need to make sure you get into your body is B12, the vitamin B12. And many vegan people are not aware of what nutrition what nu nu nutrition you need to change in your diet in order to replace the meat and other stuff that you don't consume when you go vegan so it's a very important tip that i would give so i'm vegan i eat vegan meals um then i i train almost every day of the week i train people and then in the evening i take some time for myself to be with the people i love um and that's it i Try to have a relaxed and chilled um, time nowadays because of the whole thing in the world. People can they get really stressed. I know that stress is very bad for us, especially mentality-wise. It's very bad stress. It can affect your physical growth, your physical um, uh, performance, everything. So I try to keep a relaxed, chilled type of life right now and help as much people as I can. That's what I'm doing. Great. Sounds really, really good and um, really interesting. I think people would be interested in how your workout schedule looks like today with uh, one or two trainings per week. But um, before, let's talk about your workout schedule during the week, how it looked like when you were competing athletes and preparing for competitions. Okay, so I start with the comp competition schedule. Um, so. The first thing people should understand is that athletes that are very um, passionate about training for competition and training really hard, sometimes they're so passionate that they want to train seven days a week. Some people even tell me, which is crazy for me, I train two times a day. For me, training two times a day is, is not rational and not logical because, because um, when I work out, when I finish my workout, is I'm fatigued, I'm done, I'm like... Sometimes I can't pull up or dip. That's what when I finish, my, I can't planche, I can't front lever, I can't do anything. So this is when I finish my workout and my body is recovering very fast. That's why I can take only one day of rest between workouts. But for people that train really hard for competitions, I really suggest you training. This is my, the best type for my body, okay? I train for... Um, one day really hard and then I take one or two days break 
And then I train another training really intense. And then I take one day break, a full total break or, or for at least one or twice a week, total break is very important mentally also, because when you work out every day, every day, every day, you don't take even one day of break, like mental break and physical break, you can get fatigued in your mind also. And then you are not focused. And when you're not focused enough in your training, you don't do the reps in a focused way. I really believe it affects your, your growth. It really affects your growth. So I come to every workout focused, 100% focused. I knew what I want to work out, like what I want to work on in my workout. So for competitions, I was mainly preparing combos for the day I'm going to train. And after the combos, I was preparing the statics and sets and reps that I'm going to do after the combos. So it was like four days a week. Two days of them was only almost only statics because I want, I think dynamics are really, really important for competitions, but people are not working enough on statics. And then when you go and compete your endurance, not even the skills, you, the endurance is not good enough because in order to have a good endurance in competition, you need to have a lot of statics throughout the week, not only dynamics and not only combos, literally one or twice a week static workouts where you planch and front lever for one to two hours even more, if you can. Only, like almost nonstop, get your endurance really strong. And there was one day a week where, where I went to the gym and we were doing like, Dan and I, we, we, we like to do like um, a simulation of a competition mm -hmm. where we do combos we prepared for, but also we try to put ourselves in the mind as I'm competing now. So actually getting stressed, trying to bring up stress in order to deal with it now. And then when you compete, you can, you, it's not new for you to have stress, very stress. It, of course, it's different when you compete, but when you are getting used to training under stress, you can train, you can, the competition almost feels like another training, almost, it's not the same. And you also asked your friends to shout at you and stuff like that. I yes, think, yes, I think yes. As I'm, as I'm going up for a combo in a competition yeah. and I imagine myself going up for the bar is a comp bar for a competition. And it's very, very important. It was one of the best things I've done for competitions. So what that it, it was once a week. Also when I'm doing statics, static workouts, Sometimes it's good to like imagine I'm doing it in front of, of a crowd. One thing I, I really would like to tell the viewers, one sentence I'm, is going forward with me, is that when you, your comfort with going out of your comfort zone, when your comfort with being uncomfortable, when this is comfortable, getting out of it, you can achieve everything you want. It's even more than sports. It, I'm going with this sentence like everywhere because I've done more than only street workout called Tenix. I did like cybersecurity in my past. I was doing it like professionally in the army. I was doing gaming professionally and I'm doing sports and also music. So I, I took this sentence to anything that I do. When you learn to get uncomfortable, when you get comfortable with doing with, with going out of your comfort zone. When you're not scared of being un uncomfortable, you can achieve literally, literally anything you want. This is what I've been experiencing. I, I am still experiencing with everything I do. You can start with having a, a cold shower, for example. After you, you're comfortable with the warm water and you're feeling good in the, in the shower, just don't think, just open the water and change it to the coldest and just stand there and observe. Don't attach, observe what you're feeling and get comfortable with the uncomfortable feeling. So we're doing the same in the sports. We were training, going on the bar, my friends, and I was imagining that I'm competing, which is uncomfortable. It's not a, an easy um, situation to be in. So this is one thing I really would like to tell the viewers. Um, this is one major, major tip I can give. Um, so this was the schedule, um, two days a week, statics, 
maybe dynamics, but it's, it wasn't the major part of the training. And then one day of combos, freestyle, everything, and one day of competition oriented training. I was doing combos that I'm gonna do in the competition fully. Like I was, we were putting on time the rest we take between like the bar set and the P bar set. So I can see that I'm not overlapping like the time I have in a set for a competition. I was putting music that I thought I'm gonna use in a competition, everything. Just orient myself to competing. This was the competing schedule. Also one important, um, very important thing is get enough sleep at night. I know some people might have trouble sleeping, but my main goal was at least eight hours. Eight to nine hours was perfect. It can get hard to have um, some people do a lot of stuff throughout the day. So it's hard to have eight hours sleep, but it's really important, especially if you're training intensively because at night your body recovers, you're not moving, your body has the like most potential of healing itself. Not when you're active or your digestive system is working. So at sleep is very important to get eight to nine hours of sleep for like better growth and performance especially when competing, when training for competitions. So this was the schedule, four times a week, eight hours, nine hours sleep a day. Very focused every time I work out, very focused on what I'm gonna do, what, what I want to get to, the level I wanna get to, I imagine it in my head. The combos I'm gonna do, I already imagined it the day before the, the workout for the competition, I saw myself doing it. So when I'm approaching it, I'm already, I'm ready mentally, to do it and then everything follows physically. So that was the competition schedule. Do you have any questions maybe? Not concerning this. That's like really, really interesting. Um, how many work, uh, how many hours uh, in a week did you put in, uh, in the sport? So um, the gym training for the competition was a bit, this was the different um, training because it was shorter. It was two and a half hours or two hours, it depends on the gym. I couldn't work out more than this. But the other days I could work out for, it depends. I'm, I don't like to work out like on duration. I like to work out on the stuff I wanna get in the workout. Mm -hmm. So if I have a workout of one hour, but it was intense, really intense and I'm fatigued after it, great. But sometimes we could train for four hours, even more if we, if we took breaks and we're talking to each other. Freestyle, you can go on for like, if you don't rip your hands, if, even if you do, you can go for, I can go for almost however, how long I want. Okay. So in a week, um, how many hours in a week, you put in? I guess it would be like, let's say average of three hours per workout. Mm -hmm. And the other workout was shorter. So about 10 hours, maybe 11 hours of like only training. I invested much more in mentally preparing myself for it, for example, and mobility, stretching, but for training schedule, it was something like 10, 11 hours a week. And I don't think you need to work out a lot of time in order to be really good. You need to work out smart and focused and you need to know what you're aiming to in order to grow, to have growth. That's what I think and I, I've experienced. Okay, great. So with your experience, you now crafted your own, uh, like your workout schedule to one to two days per week. Yes. How does it look then? Like, do you train like so, really, really effective? So now what I'm doing is, um, I mainly do statics workouts. I still can do everything I did before like, with dynamics. And I'm not really surprised to be honest, because how I worked before, is that every skill I worked for, I, I like worked until I could do it 10 out of 10, like 100%, I nailed it. I even had dreams of me doing it. So it's, it's so deep in my subconscious and unconscious mind that I'm sure that if you give me a bar right now, even though I didn't do dynamics for one month, I could throw the same combos I threw before, dynamic wise. But statics, of course, if you don't train much, you, your level decreases and it's okay. I'm totally okay with it. I'm not training for competitions now, so I'm, I'm good with it. I'm training once or twice a week, static-wise and sets and reps. Um, 
I'm getting fatigued after every, when I say fatigued, I mean like my muscles are totally done for the workout. I can't pull up, I can't dip. I can't punch, I can't front even, I can't. I just feel like a normal person who doesn't work out at all. Mm -hmm. And that's when I know that I'm done. So one or two a week, I get enough sleep every day. It's still important for me. I do the 16 hours uh, fast and eight hours of eating, which really, really helps me. I feel like the recovery is very fast because my body has a lot of time to recover. Mm -hmm. When you don't eat much, your digestive system doesn't take energy and the energy can go to healing the body, recovering faster. So I've done crazy workouts where I used to feel like um, sore for two or three days, really crazy workouts. And now it's like one day, maybe a bit more, but I can feel the recovery is faster. So that's what I do. You can ask any question about nowadays, but there's not much to say other than two or once a week. Okay, um, cool. That is. Uh, Wesley from the community is asking, do you train with rings? So personally, I don't train in my own training with rings, but I do um, some of my tra like um, trainees, the people that train, train with rings. Um, I think that rings for calisthenics are good, are um, a good equipment to use, but I mainly focus on bar and pib bars, p bars and floor. This is what I think calisthenics is most about because rings reminds me a bit of gymnastics, which is, is a good equipment for training. But for example, in competitions, I would never use rings, would never use rings. So I really like to put my mentality into my pe the people that train. So I don't train much with rings. I do sometimes, yeah. You can do um, pretty cool exercises with it. You can work for Hefesto, for example. Really good for it. So yeah, use it, but not much. Okay, cool. And uh, Stenos Calisthenics is asking, do you do weighted calisthenics? So now I'm not doing it much, but it's a very good question because weighted calisthenics is a very, very, very good thing everybody should do when starting sets and reps after you get to a specific level where you can do, let's say more than 20 pull-ups and it's one pull-up is easy, too easy for you. And you still want to work on strength and not endurance. You don't want to get to 40 pull-ups. You want to get stronger in your explosive part, for example. Mm -hmm. So I, I was doing, yeah, weighted calisthenics for when I started in the first one and a half years, we were doing uh, mostly pull-ups and dips with 15 to 20, it got to 15 to 20 kilos. Um, yeah, I really, really recommend doing it. Everybody that starts or are already doing calisthenics, but you never did sets and reps correctly, use it, it's very good. Did you ever try out your uh, maximum, like your one rep max? Um, no, but I was working on max reps. Ah. Um, I think my one rep max, I can't say because I never tried. I knew it would, I know that I did sets with 20 kilos pull ups, mm -hmm. but I don't know my one rep max. I know that at my best, I did 80 dips. 80 yeah. dips in a row. Yes, which is very, it was very, um, I was satisfied with, satisfied with it and a bit more than 40 pull ups. Wow. Wow. That's yes. also really, really good. Yes, it's really good. Nice. Uh, and then um, I started doing elements. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, something that I would be interested in is as a, somebody who doesn't have brothers and sisters, um, and I know a lot of people ask that, um, how is it like to have a sibling? Um, it's not even a sibling, it's a twin brother. Which Sorry, is twin. Even, yeah, it, twin. No, it's, it's, it's okay. It's even word. crazier it's because yeah. twin, twin um, relationship is very, very complex, but it's also very rewarding if you use it in, the, in a good way, of course. Mm -hmm. Dan and I have a really good mentality with, with each other. So in sports specifically, this is the most interesting part for the viewers, the, the relationship Dan and I have and had really, really helped us um, grow together. Instead of competing, I wanna be better than you, and he wants to be better than me. This wasn't the mindset. The mindset was, I'm going to push Dan. I'm not looking at myself. 
I'm going to push Dan as much as I can. And Dan wants to push me as much as he can. And then when two people, you're not going from an egoic side. You don't look from your ego. I don't want to push myself. I am pushing myself. But when I look at Dan, I'm not looking at, I'm looking at someone else. I want to push him. And Dan wants to push me. It was like an acceleration for both of us. And it was like motivation-wise, I, I, I'm... When I'm work, working out with Dan, we're always motivated because I take responsibility on motivating him and he's responsible, responsible of mot- motivating me. And together you can get like one plus one is not two in this like specific um, occasion. It's like one plus one is 100. Really, I'm not even exaggerating. When you find someone who is really willing to help you and not compete with you, even in competitions, you, you wanted to talk about it. When Dan took the first place and I took the second, it was the same mentality. I was hoping that Dan w- would get the best place he could get. If it was the pr- first place, it means he was better than me this time. I was happy for him because he got the, the best place he could get. Also the same, when I got the first place and then got the third place, he was very genuinely happy for me, even though he lost the first place. And this mentality, which is most people can't understand it because they're thinking from, from their perspective. But living with a twin, the, the best thing I learned is not looking from my eyes, is looking from another person's perspective and respecting the other person. And when he is struggling through the set, I don't, and we do the same set and it's easier for me. I don't feel good with, ah, I'm, going, I'm doing better than you. No, no, I actually feel that I want to push him. So I, I would even slow down my reps in order to stay with him in the first same you know, speed. So thinking about the other person, pushing the other person, the other person is pushing you together is an acceleration for both of you. It's a win-win situation. And as a twin, I learned it with them. And it was amazing. We both got to a crazy level. I don't know any other twins that like in calisthenics at this like, and I would love if there are twins, someone that have a twin or even siblings or even a good friend, someone that you feel a connection with, but a genuine connection, not like you're nice to him and then you don't feel the same when you're not with him. Someone that you feel that you, you have love to him, not romantic love, just love. Mm-hmm. Help each other, push each other. When you push, push the other person. Don't think I'm pushing it him because I want to get back. Do it from pure love and excitement for the other person. To, for example, when Dan got the full plunge, he didn't feel I had the full plunge already. So he didn't feel like he's competing with me. I got the full plunge and he didn't. He didn't feel like he's trying to overpass me. He was pushing himself, I was pushing him. And this is the mentality I think if all the communities in the world of street workout were doing it, people would get to crazy, crazy levels. I can see that, see that West, Coast, West Coast Warriors, for example, they're really like that. They're pushing each other really, really hard. And when someone goes on the bar, we also have, have this in Israel, which I really, I really am glad that we have this. The mentality is very supportive most of the time. When someone goes on the bar, even if it's for a 360 and he can't land a 360, and all the other guys can do a quadruple 360, and he's working for a one 360, you will um, try to help him and you will try to to motivate motivate him as much as you would motivate someone going for a 720. Because it doesn't matter. You look from his eyes. You push him from his eyes. And this is a very, very big the biggest thing I learned from being a twin. Wow, that's yes, really that's... inspiring. Thank you, thank you. And it's, yeah, this in connection with uh, really the, the love and the, the support that I see in, in Israel, like when you uh, work out and all the, like, we have a lot of uh, Israeli customers also through, through you and like fans. And it's always like a really nice conversation and respectful and um, it's really this mindset that you sh- talk about, about like you, the, the, the relation between you and them, it's really not only you, it feels like, but it's also a little bit a part of the, the, the Israeli calisthenics community. 100% is the whole community. 
Of course, not everywhere, it's not pure, but mostly, yeah. This is the community we, we, bought, we have built, everybody together, not Dan and I. Dan and I had influence over it, but it's everybody together, every single one of the people that are doing calisthenics now in Israel and did. We built an amazing community, amazing. It's just getting better and better. And it's not even for performance, just when you work out, you first want to enjoy it. You do it because you love it. And when you come to a workout and you know that everybody around you are going to support you, you're getting into a zone which is supportive. Even if, if you fall, even if you land, it doesn't matter. You, you will have support and genuine real support, not competitive support where someone compliments me, but he wants to get better. No, everybody wants to get better together. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's, it's better than competing. It's better than anything. You want to go work out because you enjoy it. And everything comes with it. Competitions, wins, everybody, and everything. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, yeah, like, uh, let's, let's switch to your nutrition. You said that okay. you're vegan since uh, one month, yeah. if I uh, understood. Four, Four months. Wow. Okay, yeah. that's good. <laughs> um, so four months vegan, what, what changes did you, did you see? Feel? Um, so I'm feeling, I'm doing a lot of meditative work also. Um, so, and I'm getting more conscious about my body because you can be like shredded and, and huge, like muscle mass. But if you're not conscious about your body from the inside of feeling your body, I find it like the, the level I got to development, inner and physical development is I've got to the physical level I wanted. I was really, really strong, but I wasn't enough conscious about my body. So the first thing, almost the first thing that happened is that I went vegan. It was because that I started, I started just asking myself, I, I just understood the basic, most basic thing you can understand is whatever you put inside your body, it becomes your body. Our body is a machine that takes in stuff and then makes it the part of it. Like the banana I ate is going to be making the cells of my body. It's go going to be building the cells of my body. And then I started researching about like um, meat and dairy and is it really good for the body or not? Yes, of course, I'm not against people that eat meat. Many of my friends are not vegan. I don't really care for it like I just want people to know why I went vegan because I know that everything I put in my body becomes I, my body becomes it and nowadays the all the meat industry and dairy industry they put a lot of chemicals in the meat anti antibiotics um, steroids stuff like this for more meat and more like for better industry like they have some industry um, decisions they make it's not health decisions, it's industrial decisions. And I became more conscious about my body, about that's why I'm doing the 16 and eight, 16 fest and eight um, hours of eating is the same reason. I treat my body as my temple and I respect my body. I really respect it. I've been through a lot with my body and I want the best for it. That's why I'm vegan right now. I'm taking B12, and spirulina, which is supplements mm -hmm. for me. And I feel much, much better. My mind is clearer, is, is more clear. And I feel more focused. I feel more motivated. I feel more happy, relaxed. It was a good, for me personally, it was a good change. That's great. And that's what it's about. I think like you can't generalize like stuff but I, you explained it well i don't want to go more in detail in it i really respect and okay. uh, like it's interesting to to get your experience as an as an athlete uh, who is not just only about the the mental side but also like the physical side and uh, sees the the changes on his body so yeah yes exactly. and you and you get enough protein yeah yes of course <laughs> there is there, there is a big uh, conception about this People think that you can get, get enough protein if you don't eat meat or dairy, but it's not true. You can get a lot of protein 
a plant-based protein? Of course you can. There are many different options. You just need to invest. The hard thing about going vegan for me, hard thing, it's not really hard because I did it out of excitement and respect for myself and my body, is you need to invest some energy at first. Not now I don't do it. It's very natural. But at first of changing your diet, getting enough protein, getting the good nutrition your body needs. Yeah. So at first you need to invest a bit more energy. If you're down, it changed my life in a good way. That's great. Yeah. Nice. Um, what are your goals for 2020? Like, uh, do you have something in mind? Do you have something that you want to talk about that you want to share? Um, so as I said in the first, like at first in the interview, um, I want to help other people. This is what I do right now. I even care, I care about myself, but my own development in statics now is not that important for me. I don't care like being in the same level for the end of 2020 even, if I see other people developing. I want to help other people. I, this is what I want to do. I, I really enjoy, enjoy genuinely seeing other people get excited about getting their plunge. Yesterday, one of my clients got one arm back lever. And he was so happy just to see he's smiling and happy and satisfied. And even after you get a new element, you, you're more, even more motivated to go on. It's like when you unlock, you just get a whole door opens for you. Yeah. So I love it. I love helping other people. I, so this is my main goal, like in the sports now, just helping more people um, and seeing other people develop. But personally, what I do other than teaching and helping other people is mental development. This is the main thing I'm working on, I'm working on right now. I'm developing mentally um, in every aspect possible, really. Okay. If somebody uh, in the audience is uh, interested in uh, being like uh, coached by you and like getting personal yes. training, is it yes. something that you also offer uh, virtually or is it just physically in, in, uh, in, in, yeah, in Israel? So I prefer doing it physically, of course, because when you have physical contact with a person is much more effective. Um, I can do online programs and online coaching. Um, yeah, I can do it. I don't do it right now because um, I offer like Israelis the training, the, my trainings. But yeah, I'm open if if one of the viewers, if some of you want to get um, coaching, it doesn't even have to be a like, personal program. You can just have me helping you in sending me videos or even motivational or mindset coaching, which is very important. People should know. You can work hard, but if you don't work smart, you will get you will get results. You will, but it can take twice as much time as if you were working smart. And you should enjoy it. I teach my clients to enjoy it. Don't stress yourself about doing sets. Don't stress yourself about needing to be better. You will get better. The more you, the less you're stressed, the better you're going you're going to be. The less you're stressed the faster you're gonna, you're gonna progress. And it's really like the opposite for most people because they really want to, to be better. So they stress themselves and they put themselves down. I'm not good enough. When you say you're not good enough, your body listens. We have different systems in the body, not only the brain. Your body hears what you say. If you say, so you're saying, I'm not good enough, your body will react. You will progress, but slowly. One of the things my clients are doing now, two clients, I'm, I'm experimenting something with them. I told them to every day they wake up to say, I'm, I, have, I have a perfect punch. And not only have a perfect punch, when they say it, they imagine themselves doing a punch. And one of them just got his throttle punch. He's really new. So he's not really strong at it, but um, we, we're going to see what's, what will happen. It's just like less than one week we're trying it but the mentality is very important. So if people want even coaching in this side, I would love to help. If you don't want to pay, that's okay. I can help, not that much because it requires time and energy. But if you have one question, two questions, I would be glad to help, no money. 
if it gets more than this, of course, I worked hard for this. I, I would love to work more, but it's my profession. So great. That's what I offer. We will put your social media links and uh, your email address maybe in the in the comments so people can contact you. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's really cool and it's, it's a cool possibility. Um, so to finish off before we jump into some quick questions, quick answers, uh, yeah. and end this episode is uh, what are like in a summary what are the what is your advice that you would give to young athletes who start with with calisthenics. Okay, young athletes mostly are very, very passionate. I'm still passionate, but my passion went to more than teaching than, than getting better myself. But as a young um, calisthenics athlete, you might be very passionate, which is very, very good. Um, keep your passion, go only from passion. This is the most important thing. Don't stress, go from passion. If you want to punch, for example, work for it. But every time you work for it, even if you you thought today you were going to nail the straddle plunge and you didn't get it. Be motivated about next workout and be passionate about next workout. Don't put yourself down because many people, especially young athletes, can quit calisthenics because they think they are not good for it. They're not enough for it. I'm not good enough to some people that when I train at the beach, I tell them, everybody, you can come next workout and work out with me. It doesn't matter your level. People t tell me I'm not good enough especially starters. I'm not good enough to train with you. This is not true. You are good enough the way you are, not, you are now. Be passionate, but work smart. Don't overtrain. Sleep well, try to sleep eight hours a, a night, especially if you're training really hard. And you might be because you're studying and you're very passionate, which is good. Keep your passion, maintain it. Sometimes you won't feel like you wanna train hard. Even if you're training like, four to five times a week. You can have a week where you don't want to train. If you're really passionate and you have no motivation, just remember why you started and remind yourself that why you're doing it, why you trained last time, why you want to train. Even if you don't feel motivated, find someone or go by yourself and train. Hard work is very important. Mindset is very, very good. Getting your mindset right is very important, but in the end, if you don't work, if you don't get the work done, you won't get results. You can be a guru in mindset, really a guru, and know how to get out of your comfort zone, know how to plan a perfect workout plan. If you don't go out and work out, if you don't get the work done, you won't get anything. So for starters, two main things. If you're a starter and you're afraid to step out and start working, work out, you are good enough, as you are, it's really important to understand. You can be the next world champion if you want to. If you can imagine it, you can get it. This is for the ones who are thinking they're not good enough. For the ones who are very passionate and just want to work out, limit yourself because you want to get better. You don't want to train too much. That's the main tips I can give. Just stay balanced. Even if you have a lot of motivation, keep it balanced and you will just get better faster. Okay, that's great. I think people can take some stuff with it. Um, I really got a little oh, bit- uh... sorry. I'm sorry that I stopped you. And please, please do basics. If you're starting, this is the most important thing I'm doing like this because I really hope you're gonna do it. Do <laughs> basics. Pull-ups, deep push-ups. Okay. <laughs> great i really like love the part uh, when you said like yeah, if you want to be the next world champion then uh, like i really like it and um yeah i really yeah, appreciate i really yes. appreciate you, you sharing with it uh with us um with the community so um yeah let's jump into the quick questions quick okay. answers what do you prefer? Like, it feels so weird to get go from such a deep topic to now, what do you prefer, pizza or burger? <laughs> Wait, so this is the question or not? Yes. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> so, um, I, I'm vegan for four months, so I didn't eat a burger or pizza lately, but when I was eating, I really like both, to be honest. It's there, like are vegan, the, there are vegan alternatives. Yes, there, no, I'm eating. I'm eating vegan pizza and vegan burger for sure, but... 
there are days for pizza, there are days for burger, you know? Some days I'm feeling like I want a pizza, some days I want a burger. I love both. They are both blessed. I'm blessed to have pizza and burger. I don't want to pick only one. <laughs> okay. So you take both. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think an easy question for you. Are you a dog or a cat person? I'm a dog person, 100%. I have my dog, Waffle. And I love both, but I'm a dog person, 100%. Great. I expected that. Um, your favorite location for holidays? Mm, that's a good one. Um, I think it might surprise you, Phil, but I think it, it's, it's going to be a cold country. I love cold countries. <laughs> um, I love Sweden because I have Daniel and Malin, which are very... <laughs> <laughs> I love Daniel and Malin, so I would love to have a holiday over there in Sweden, but I love... Also, um, Europe, the whole, I love Europe. I've been to Spain also. Um, I love a lot of countries. I don't even have one specific one. I almost, I enjoyed every country I've been to. Every country is special. That's true. Great. Um, do you have a, an inspiration, like a person uh, who is insp inspiring you? Um, yeah, I do, but it's not... Um, it wasn't calisthenics wise. It's like mm -hmm. a person um, mostly like generally. Okay. Do so, you still want to share it? Yes, of course. I have, I have many inspirations at the moment because I'm really digging into inner work. I'm doing a lot of inner work right now, mindset and also um, like inner strength work and how to develop others and help others. So my, one of the biggest inspirations for me is Steve Jobs. You might know him, the CEO of Apple, like the founder of Apple. Um, he's not alive, unfortunately, but his story very, very inspired me. Like he, they fired him from his own company that he found, like founded, which is crazy. And the thing he did, this is what's crazy about this guy is he's amazing because he didn't get mad and say, oh, they fired me. Like he just went and like founded a new company and the new company got better than Apple at that time. And then Apple were going down because he wasn't there and the company called Next, they went up. So Apple, he agreed that Apple would buy his company and he got back to managing Apple. And this specific thing, the mindset here was like, they it's like it's like where we i would train people and then someone the all the calisthenics community would say tom is not can't train us anymore tom is like not good enough for us i i will i can like get mad and and like go off and everything but what i would do inspired by steve jobs is i would just start a new like open new group of teaching and people would come because I know my value and he knew his value. And also he's a very creative person and I love creativity. He did like multiple stuff, multiple. He was going in multiple subjects, not only one. I have profession in sports, but I do other stuff and I love it. I love to combine. I don't love, on, I, I love doing different stuff and then combining instead of doing one thing, only one profession. So this is my inspiration. Yeah, Steve Jobs is one of my biggest inspiration, inspirations. Great. You, you talked about creativity, which brings me to the question from Iris. Uh, and also like uh, Dan told me a lot about it. Um, like your um, talent, your, um, yeah, your relationship to music, because I think yeah. you have a, um, like, uh, yeah, you want to share it yourself. What is your relationship to music? I would love. Um, I hope um, the viewers are interested in it because it's not about the sports here. Um, I've been playing the piano since the age of four. My father is a music musician. So I was just playing without even knowing what I'm doing. Like the notes I was trying to, I was starting to play um, since the age of four. I was learning about 10 years with a teacher. And then I started like at the same time at the age of 10 or 11, I started playing on saxophone also for eight years. So music is a really, really big part of my life. I have, if you know what is a perfect pitch, uh, yeah. like when you hear a note and you know it, 
So I can hear uh, a song and just, just play it without reading the notes. And it's very special. It's not just a talent to show off. It's, this is not why I, say, why I say it. It's because it changes your life. My father really helped me develop it. If you have it, it's genetical. If you have it, you can develop it. Mm -hmm. And then it gets to a level where I can hear cars um, honking, like, and I hear the notes. I don't even, it doesn't even, even bother me. I just hear the note. Or when a door is like, having this noise when you close it, slowly close the door and you have like a pitch, you, I hear the notes. So music is like, is a major part of my life. I really like to improvise um, music. Improvise is where you, if you don't know for the viewers, is where you create music on the go. You don't, you don't play a song you know, you create the song while you're think, thinking about it. It's very intuitive, it's not rational. So I do it all the time. I do it in my head when I'm bored. I really love it, like improvising. Also, this is what, why I, I love combining the subjects. Also in street workout, when I go for freestyle, I like to improvise. So I improvise there, I improvise here. Two different subjects, but they have um, similarities. Creativity, here and here. When you improvise, it's pure creativity. You get into a flow state, if you know what it is. When you get into a flow state, you're literally 100% intuitive. You don't think, you just go, you just flow. Dan is done, like go to a crazy level on the bars. You can get to a flow state and literally freestyle for more than one minute without thinking a bit. Sometimes when he goes on the bar, asking what you're going to do, he said, I don't know. And then he goes on and start doing crazy stuff. And I also do it. I do it when I, so music for me is a very, 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 um, special part of my life. I like playing, especially improvising, and I just love it. I love it. I really, it's another way of expressing. You can express yourself when you're doing plunge. People cannot actually feel your vibe. It's like a very like powerful vibe, or maybe it's like a long combo with not powerful, but you can express yourself dancing, sweet workout, freestyling, everything. Music is one of the best ways for me to express myself. And I sometimes, but like rarely, I upload myself um, to my stories. <laughs> it's very nice. Great. Thanks for sharing. I think yes. a lot of people don't know this about you. Yes, yes. Great. I share only my, my sports life on Instagram. Yeah. Um, what is the best calisthenics event you've ever been at so far? Oh. That's a very good question. Um, wow. I think it would be, um, wow, it's really hard because I really loved um, the calisthenics events in Latvia mm -hmm. because I really love the Latvian fam, especially. They are really, we have a really good connection. But I think the main best calisthenics event I've been to, for me, from my experience, not the not professionally, but from the experience I had, experience, it was um, the 2018, I think, World Championship in uh, Moscow. Like, I can't even explain how it is to meet 70 other athletes, everybody, the, at their highest peak, highest level. Everybody are international athletes. And it's not like very egoistic and, and competitive. We went together, we did stuff together. We supported each other. Some get injured in competitions. We support them also. It's amazing. The hype is unreal, unreal. Like you get chills every three minutes from the next person going up. It's crazy. So for me, it was, Maybe 2017, I'm not sure. It, I think 2017, yeah. The World Championship 2017. We're done, went to compete. It was, I have no words. Okay. That's <laughs> it was okay. amazing. Great. Okay, and then the last question. Maybe yes. the hardest of the day. If you have to decide, you only are allowed to continue one reps statics or dynamics 
who asked it? May I may I ask? Who? Um, honestly, uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it's a really good one, mm -hmm. really good one. Um, I love the three of them, mm -hmm. but wait before I tell you, I want to I want you to take a guess because I think you already know. Um, I think, but I could be completely. Yeah, just try that better. I think it, it it will be statics. Yeah. Yes, you're right. <laughs> so I would go with statics, statics because mainly because I think that statics. What I love about statics is that once you unlock uh, an element, it's open. Like mm -hmm. when I landed the front flip grab first, the second try I didn't. I wasn't able to land it. It takes a lot of, it's not bad, but it takes a lot of time to get it 10 out of 10. And even then, it was 10 out of 10. I went to Finland to compete one month before the competition in Sweden. And I was, I failed it three times. Actually, I would like to talk one minute about it because it might help a lot of viewers. In that specific competition, I was working two months already on the front degree grab and I got it 10 out of 10 at my home place, home gym. I, I went to Finland, I went for the first set. The first thing I'm, I was going to do was the front free grill. And then I went for it. So it was the second set, it was the semifinals. And I went for it and I didn't land it. And I was so sure that I'm gonna land it that I was shocked. I was standing on the stage, I was shocked for one, for one second. I was shocked that I didn't land it. But the thing I did, which I would think would inspire a lot of people, what I did was I decided to try it again and even again. I knew that I'm probably going to fail, but what I wanted to do is to feel myself trying it as much as I could in that environment, because it's very rare to have that environment of not, not imagining real crowd, real bars, real competition and trying it. I didn't, I wouldn't have much. I, I, it's really rare to have that experience. So I used it. I failed three times. I didn't go to the finals. I was good with it that I didn't go because I knew that next time I'm going to try it, I'm going to land it. And no surprise, one month after, I'm going to Sweden, first set, first trick, perfect front trick, trick grab. I was actually, I was feeling, I'm getting chills even now when I'm saying it <laughs> because it was a really big disclosure for me. At that moment in Finland, in the first competition, I felt bad that I didn't land it, but I knew deep down that I'm gonna thank myself for doing it. And yeah, next month I did it. I landed it perfectly. It was amazing for me, the feeling and the achievement. So yeah, I would go with statics um, because when you unlock uh, an element, you will probably be able to do it for the rest of your life if you keep training. And even, uh, if, even that I don't work out that much right now, I can still do a full punch pretty easily. It's for life, you know, and I love it. I really love it. I love statics. I love explosive power. I love it. That's great. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're coming to an end. Um, how can people get in touch with you? Um, where can they reach you best? Um, so you can use my email which is pretty easy. You can, you have my email on my Instagram page, but also direct message me. I'm really, I sometimes have a lot of messages, but I'm doing my best to respond to each one of the people that are writing. Even someone with 100 followers, it doesn't matter. The follower account is just a number. I'm a person, you're a person. Just write me. I will try my best to answer you. If you want a tip, if I can give you, I will give you. I will give you. If I feel like it's too much for me to put, I will say it's too much. That's it. But I will answer. Don't be afraid. Just write me on Instagram. DM is easy. We live. We live in a really good time. You can just send a message to the people you admire or models. I don't know. And some of them are really humble. I don't think I'm better than anyone watching this. I'm just a person. Don't be afraid. Write a message. I will answer. I will. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Okay, nice. Um, yeah, 
thanks to everyone for listening to this um before, I, before you will be able to end the episode and say goodbye to everyone tom uh, i want to say thank you to everyone taking the time because we i think we nearly got like 18 90 minutes or something of uh, oh. of interview which is like really really long um so yeah i hope oh. to, the, to everyone listening to this till the end that's that's crazy that's like really um yeah deep respect for that deep thank you and uh, yeah if you want to support the episode leave a like leave a subscribe share it with the people that uh, can take value out of it and also don't forget to comment who should be interviewed next so um yeah tom thanks a lot for your time thanks a lot thank, lot, you. Lot. thank you so much for having me i really appreciate you taking the time i know uh, you have a lot of stuff uh, to do and to um yeah to 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 develop and stuff like that uh, so yeah thanks for that thanks for your time and you. you can say I, goodbye to everyone thanks for li okay. listening i i want to say before i say goodbye it's really appreciated what you're doing phil you're changing changing the street workout calisthenics community the future of the community you might people might not not know but you're doing you're blessing us the whole community with this with Gornation, of course i support you 100 percent, 100 percent. but also with the interviews it's amazing thank you so much for it thank you for having me thank you guys for listening if you find anything you have any questions about the interview feel free to ask me in my dm i will try my best to answer everybody i promise thank you so much for listening and having me